What's up everyone, it's Caddy with MoneyVest. So inflation numbers obviously creating a lot of selling pressure in the markets. And not only that, we did have the interest rate expectations change for the first time in a very meaningful way. And the market's kind of now really pricing in what the Federal Reserve has been telling us for the last three to six months. So hope you all enjoy this video and a complete update on this market sell-off on the back of a very, very hot inflation print. Make sure that you drop a like and of course uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time we did have an inflation live stream earlier in the day basically going over the actual print market to reaction which obviously did drop quite considerably right after the numbers came out and uh and of course uh, we did see the markets uh, of course big tech and magnificent seven stocks also struggle on the day so as always make sure that you drop a like subscribe to the channel links to our discord and patreon is going to be down below we still do have a few more spots open for february 16 percent annual discount that's available until the end of this month so links going to be down below we'd love to have you on board and we are going to be preparing for our beta launch very soon in the month of march with some features getting rolled out and then other upgrades along the way throughout the course of this year. So again, if you want to get access, early access to the beta launch, link's going to be down below. And also do connect, by the way, you'll also get access to the members only private videos and all the trade alerts as well. And also do connect with me on Instagram. My handle is going to be CassWRP. We'll love to connect with you there also. So this was the CPI numbers, inflation numbers coming in much hotter than what the expectations were. So 0.3% was the actual month over month CPI, year over year coming in at 3.1%. We got core CPI, so core inflation, so X food and energy at 0.4% month over month and year over year coming in at 3.9%, which obviously once again creates that dynamic where that inflation is a little bit sticky. It is here to stay and that's almost twice as much as the Fed's target. Now, Dow tumbles 500 points, posting the worst day since March of 2023 after a much hotter than expected inflation print. And this is what interest rate expectations now look like with only four rate cuts being priced in from five and a quarter percentage points down to four and a quarter, four and a half percent. So that's uh, about four rate cuts is what the market's pricing in with the first cut coming in June. So not only have we delayed in the rate cut expectations, we have also gone down on the amount of rate cuts as well. And this is exactly, this is literally exactly what I've been talking about over the last several weeks. The markets are opening themselves up to this repricing risk, to this unpleasant surprise that because the market's expectations were so high, and if the Federal Reserve does not deliver on those expectations, well, guess what? That's going to open us, uh, open us up to that disappointment, to that unpleasant surprise. So this is just market's way of kind of readjusting to the idea that the Federal Reserve may not cut rates six or seven times. They actually may cut rates only three to four times. And not only that, we're looking at the timing of those rate cuts sometime in the middle of this year towards the end of this year. Earlier, it was as early as March. So even next month, the markets were pricing in for a rate cut. And now that's been pushed out to June of 2024. It's very normal. This is exactly what we were you know, discussing in our Discord, in our Patreon, and our YouTube videos as well. And this is what the markets look like. This is simply repricing all of that in. Uh, Microsoft falling, Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta. Uh, we did have NVIDIA slightly down, still managed to basically stay flat. But the entire market was down with all sectors selling off. All 11 sectors were down on the S&P 500 at least 1%, if not more than 1%, to as much as over 2 2.5% on the day in the last one week again technology is the one that's actually pushing higher consumer cyclicals are higher everything else is selling off and pulling back in the last one month again it's a little bit of a split market with technology comm services industrials financials all pushing higher with materials utilities and real estate selling off we got cocoa prices pushing up and then we got sugar prices ethanol volatility and coffee also selling off with bitcoin here just a little bit over 49,500 with ether just over 2600 as well so this right here was the entire market with nasdaq here dropping 1.8 percent s&p down 1.3 and the dow jones dropping over 1.3 as well so going over to volatility so volatility finally broke a little bit over 15 almost 16 it actually was as high as 18 on the day so huge spike in the vix uh, we are getting closer and closer to our original target, which was around 18 to 20 levels. We actually got up to as much as 18 almost. Uh, we'll see if we actually do follow through on this momentum higher for the VIX throughout the rest of this week. And if the markets do continue to sell off, the futures right now are somewhat flat. So we'll continue to monitor where the VIX goes. But very, very important. The VIX stays high. The VIX goes high. It's time to buy. And that's exactly what we're going to plan on doing 
the, the next time we get up to as much as, let's say, 20 or 36 levels. So those right there, very, very important VIX levels, and we'll start to drill across average back into the market and deploy some cash once again. And right now, uh, you know, on the day, pretty strong rally over 13% for the VIX. Uh, talking about crude oil prices, uh, they continue to rally higher. So basically trading back up to almost $70 per barrel, up about nine basis points right now. Support level is going to stay put and validated at $72, $73 a barrel. So that right there is going to be a very, very important level of support and a resistance and a target back up to $79 to $80 a barrel for crude oil. Uh, talking about Bitcoin, so Bitcoin here just sitting under 50,000. I did send out an alert today for a Bitcoin spot ETF. So again, if you are interested in joining and getting access to all those alerts and find out exactly what I'm buying and selling, link is going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board there. And uh, again, Bitcoin here just hovering around that $50,000 level and Ether just a little bit over 2,600 at the moment as well. Now going over to uh, the markets. So S&P 500 on the day with a pretty decent sell-off. So this right here is the daily chart on the S&P. So reasonable pullback, but still getting bought up here intraday because we were trading as low as 49.20 uh, and the S&P getting bought back up to 49.53 and support level is going to stay put down to 4,800. So this right here, previous resistance, resistance acting as a new support on the S&P 500. And we're seeing a little bit of a pullback with the RSI, the MACD also showing some signs of some weakness and a pullback as well. Talking about the NASDAQ, same exact thing. So we did see a bit of a sell-off here, gap down and that accelerated selling pressure. But intraday, green candle does represent the buyers did somewhat step in intraday to buy some stocks back and support level is going to stay put roughly into 15,000 to as much as 15,400 on the NASDAQ with the RSI also showing signs of some weakness. And if you do see the MACD crossing below the signal line, then there is potential for more downside on the NASDAQ as well. Now, going over to uh, Apple here, starting with Apple stock. So Apple on the day also dropping a little bit over 1%. So coming right back down, RSI, MACD quite neutral. 185 is still reasonable for, for Apple and support level is going to stay put down to $180 per share. Uh, for the company, very, very strong support levels at those prices, all the way down to as low as 165 for Apple as well. So previous support, previous support. Both of those are very, very important levels. 165, of course, is going to be a much stronger level of support, and I'd be a lot more aggressive in dollar cost averaging at those prices for Apple as well, uh, with, of course, a much decent support in the 180s as well. Talking about Amazon, and uh, Amazon here also dropping a little bit over 2% on the day, so starting to fill a little bit of this gap, and it's now back under 170. So my call strike was 170, and right now it's running back down to 168, so that's good. Support level is going to stay put down to 155 for Amazon moving forward with a little bit of a gap to fill for Amazon once again, and resistance and targets going to be back up to 176 for Amazon. Uh, talking a little bit about Tesla and Tesla here on the day dropping even further back in the 180s now. I think it was down over 2% on the day here. Uh, so about 2.18%. So 184 is where we're at. And this right here, of course, is the overall downtrending channel still within the context of this lower highs and lower lows at the moment and continues to be very, very weak. Technically speaking, support level is going to stay put down to 184, 185, down to as low as 150s, where I do believe Tesla is going to be super undervalued in the 150s here uh, moving forward. So that's going to be that next aggressive buying opportunity for us if Tesla trades down to that level. But nonetheless, 184, 185, still a reasonable support in the meantime. Talking about NVIDIA and NVIDIA here, finally, a little bit of a red day. But even then, intraday getting bought up here fairly quickly. So only down about 17 basis points here. 721 is where it's at. Uh, you know, very, very overbought on the RSI and the MACD. So support level is going to stay put inside this green rectangle in the low 500s for uh, for NVIDIA. A little bit of a breakout from this ascending triangle. Uh, and of course, we are seeing that overbought levels, overbought conditions for NVIDIA at the moment. So a little bit of, uh, you know, a sell off here, 17 basis points. It's practically nothing, but getting bought up here intraday fairly quickly. So not, not a lot of changes from the previous analysis, but just the idea that, okay, there is risk associated with nvidia with amd considering how the valuations are just skyrocketed so much and the technicals also are incredibly overbought amd is quite interesting with this symmetrical triangle so there is possibility for a bigger breakout in the future resistance is going to stay put at 185 support level is going to stay put at 157 in line with this previous support level previous resistance actually that we have seen and a lot of consolidation sideways for amd so resistance like i said it's going to stay put at 185 support level at close to 157 for advanced micro devices uh, talking about PayPal here and PayPal on the day also dropping a little bit over 3%. Uh, it did have a strong day yesterday of 2%. 
dropping on the day back down to under $58.26. Uh, still within the context of this broader downtrend of lower highs and lower lows. So very much trading within the context of this downtrend here. Support level is going to stay put obviously in the low 50s and resistance all the way up to $67 per share for PayPal. Visa, on the other hand, continues to consolidate sideways near all-time highs. And the resistance is going to be at closer to $279. That is going to continue to be a very important level of uh, supply here for Visa because it's gotten rejected here a couple of times. And this has been a little bit of a blow off the top of rally here. RSI MACD showing signs of some negative divergence with the support level sitting put at $245 to $250, which is going to be a pretty good swing trading idea for Visa in the future. That's a level to keep in mind, of course, if and when it actually comes down to that level, Pretty good opportunity to buy into this stock once again. Uh, talking a little bit about Meta platforms now and Meta on the day also rolling over down almost 2%. So a little bit of a sell off and still has a gap to fill in the 400s. So 420s, 440s, very important gap to fill down in the 380s. So another really important support there down to as low as $352 per share for Meta Platform. So overbought, of course, we got the RSI and MACD overstretched to the upside. So if you do start seeing that pullback for a Meta, uh, support level, like I said, it's gonna stay put at 383 down to $352 for Meta Platforms. Talking about Netflix here, and Netflix also showing signs of weakness. Again, RSI, MACD crossing below the signal line, started to finally break down from this range of consolidation here. And it's got a gap to fill with the support level that's going to stay put down in the 480s and 490s for Netflix moving forward. The resistance is going to stay put roughly in the 570s for Netflix as well. So lots of consolidation sideways. Resistance is going to stay put at 571. Support level is going to stay put down in the 490s, uh, in the low, four, low 500s basically for Netflix moving forward. Talking about Google here and Google on the day also dropping a little bit over one and a half percent. So lots of consolidation sideways on the RSI and the MACD support level inside this green rectangle in the 140s and 145. Resistance is going to stay put roughly in the 150 right now for Google. And obviously dropping a little bit with the doji candle down about one and a half percent on the day. Finally, we got Microsoft, Costco and Enphase and Microsoft here also dropping down in the low 400s. Still, in my opinion, a little bit more on the overpriced side, trading at a bit of a premium. Support level is going to stay put down to 384, down to 366 for Microsoft. Moving forward with the RSI MACD also, of course, showing signs of a bit of a weakness on the price action. And finally, we come over to Enphase and Costco. <clears throat> And Enphase here getting bought up after being down 4% on the day. So green candle on a red day does suggest there were some buyers stepping in. There were some buyers present. Resistance is going to stay put in the 137, 138 range for Enphase uh, moving forward. And then finally, we got Costco. Costco here on the day also rolling over. Finally, starting to see a little bit of a breakdown from this uh, positive, like the bullish divergence, bullish, uh, basically bullish wedge, rising wedge is what I'm, I'm having a hard time finding my words, but rising wedge here for Costco. And it's now starting to see a little bit of a breakdown. RSI MACD also showing some signs of that pullback. Support level is going to stay put down to 678 for Costco as well. So the bottom line is we definitely did see a lot of weakness intraday from the markets. Uh, of course, you know, selling off on the back of this hotter than expected inflation numbers. Um, but this is just a repricing the markets are going through where we are seeing expectations come down on interest rate fronts and we're seeing a little bit of a delayed cut with fewer cuts that are being priced into the market now. That's exactly what the market's kind of readjusting to at the moment moving forward. So I'll be kind of sharing my whole strategy, my tips and doing some more members only private videos uh, for everybody on Discord and Patreon. So again, link's gonna be down below if you want to join and be a part of our MoneyVest community. Volatility is on the rise and that's exactly what we want. And if it continues to go up, we'll start dollar cost averaging and start deploying cash back into the market. And I will be sharing all the trade alerts in our Discord as well. So again, link's gonna be down below. We'd love to have you on board. So always happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.